In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to make these swirly particle effects in Blender using fluid simulations and a little bit of geometry nodes. This is inspired by sketchy visual cinema 4D tutorials, and we can try to recreate this in Blender. I'm using Blender 4.5 for this, just for the better performance with high particle count. We can open new Blender scene and we don't have to delete anything. I'm gonna set up the camera first by resetting the rotation and location by pressing Alt R and Alt G. And I'm gonna move the camera up with G and Z. We can press zero on the numpad to go to camera view. And in the camera properties, I want to set up a big focal length, so I'll use 135. And we can lock the camera here so we can move it and reframe until the cube is just on the edge. In the edit mode, I'm gonna scale the cube to the size I want the fluid thickness to be. And we can move the cube up a little bit just to sit on the grid. Now we can scale it on the x-axis so it fits the frame. I should have done this in edit mode, but we can apply the scale. Okay, now that we are happy with the size of the cube, that's going to be our fluid, we can go to the object, quick effects and quick liquid. And if you press play, we can see that the fluid is falling all the way down. Reason why is because Blender added the domain for the fluid that is too big. So we need to scale it for the size just a little larger than the fluid mesh. So I'm gonna move these vertices up just below the cube. And we can scale it on the X and Y axis as well. We can leave the height here so the fluid has some space to splash around. And if you go back to the frame one and press play, it seems like nothing is happening. But if we add the turbulence force to the scene, and press play, we can see that the fluid is moving around inside the domain. Now this is too much, so we will need to adjust some settings. But before we do that, we can turn off the visibility of the cube that was our fluid mesh. And in the liquid domain, under the particle settings, we can go to the viewport display and uncheck show emitter, as we don't need to see the fluid, only the particles. As we have the domain selected, we can increase the resolution to 86 for now. And the higher you set this, you will get the better quality of the simulation and more particles. But for now, we can leave it on 86 just for the performance. As you can see, movement is still quite strong, so we can adjust some settings in the force object. And the only thing I'm gonna actually do is increase the flow to 0.1. And as you can see, we have much better and more stable movement. To make it more interesting, I'm gonna add the driver to Z location so the force is moving up over time. And I'll do the same for the Y rotation. And now we have movement that is changing over time and it's not repeating the same turbulence pattern. Now we can go back to the domain setting. You don't have to do this, but I like to increase the time steps just to make the simulation more stable, especially for the particle rotation as the turbulence tends to make it glitchy. Just have in mind, this will drastically increase the bake time. If you scroll down to the simulation here, we won't really change much except maybe this narrow band just to get a thicker layer of particles. Here, if you want, you can turn on the diffusion so you can control viscosity and surface tension. And this can give you some interesting results. Here also you have some presets for water, oil and honey, and you can experiment with this. Under the particles, we have options to add spray, dust and bubbles. For this video, I will leave this out, but if you want to get some more detail on the top, you can turn on the spray. Have in mind, everything we do later in geometry nodes, you will have to repeat for the spray as it will be created as a separate particle system. Here under the mesh, you can leave as it is, but I will lower the up press to one and particle radius to one as well. And most importantly, you need to turn on the speed vector here as we will need this in geometry nodes. Under the caching here, we will change from replay to all and you can turn on resumable just so you can stop and resume the baked preview how it looks. Here also under the volumetric data, we need to change from open VDB to unicache and we can press bake all. This can be slow if you're baking high resolution and it will be big in size. So just have in mind where do you allocate the baking folder. To stop the bake, you can press escape and we can preview the simulation. We have some interesting swirling patterns going on. And now we can do our geometry node setup. Also, you can export this as an Alembic and import it back and you will have the particles as a point cloud. But we will do a little bit differently in this video. We can turn off the visibility of the domain as we don't need to see the particles anymore. We're going to add a single vertex into the scene. And if you don't see this option, you need to activate extra objects add-on in the preferences. When you add single vertex, it will put you in the edit mode. So we can press tab to go back to object mode. And what we need to do is to add particle instance modifier. Under the object here, we can select liquid domain. And now we have each of those particles represented as a single vertex. We can add geometry node modifier and we can press new. Now we can go to the geometry node workspace. And don't worry, this won't be a big complicated node tree. We are only gonna use a few nodes. First, we wanna turn these vertices into points. So we're gonna add mesh to point node. As you can see, there are two big now, so we can adjust the radius to 0.01. Yours might be different. It depends on the size of the simulation. 
I'm gonna set the endpoint to where I exit the baking just so it's easy to preview. We can change the render engine to cycles, although this will work in Eevee as well, but cycles looks better. Device to GPU, and we can go to render mode. To make this more interesting, I'm gonna turn the world color to black, so we are only lighting with the point light. And we can move the point light to the side where we want the light to come from, and maybe lower it down so we get some more shadows. In the light settings, I'm gonna increase the radius just to soften up the shadows a little bit. You can experiment with lighting and do the setup that you think looks good for you. We can go back to the geometry nodes now. If we zoom in, we can see that all the points are the same size, and we can randomize that a little bit to make it look better. We can add random value node. For the max, I'll put 0.01 .01, and for the min, 0.005. Like I said, these values might be different for you. It all depends on the simulation size. And we can plug this in into the radius. And now we have some difference in size, which looks more interesting. Now, if you zoom in really close, you will see that we have a lot of intersecting spheres. And the reason for that is that Blender's fluid simulation generates these clusters of three or five particles that are really close together, which is really annoying. And I'm not sure how to prevent this. So if anyone knows the solution for this, please leave a comment below. And the way I'm going to fix this is I'm going to use Cartesian Caramel's Relax Point Custom Node. Now, some people might complain and say, why are you using custom nodes? Listen, it's free. What's easier to build something like this or just use one node? I'll choose one node. Default 0.1 is too big for this case, so I will lower it to 0.01. And you can play with the number of iterations because you might not need 10. We just need to minimize intersecting. Have in mind, this is performance heavy, especially with the big particle count, so we can keep this turned off until the render time. Now we want to be able to access particle velocity so we can use that in the shader nodes. And all we need to do is transfer that attribute from the liquid domain. So I will drag the domain to this GeoNode setup. We can change the position to relative here and we can add sample nearest surface node. We can also do this with sample index, but this requires less nodes. We need to change from float to vector as we are sampling velocity. And for the value that we are sampling, we can add the name attribute node, which will be vector and we need to write velocity. and plug this in into the value. And if we preview this, we can see that we have access to the fluid velocity. Now we just need to transfer that to this geometry. We can add the store name attribute node and we're gonna change this to vector as we are storing vector attribute. And we can name this V or whatever we want. And we need to plug this into the value. I'm gonna add the set material node so we can assign the material to our points and we can choose this existing material. And we can go to the shader editor. We also need to set the material to this object so we have easy access to it. Now we need to add the attribute node and the attribute that we're gonna use is V as this is what we named it. And if we preview this, we can see that we have access to the velocity in the shader nodes now. And we can use this to drive the color of the particles. Now we won't use these colors directly. We need to plug this into the vector math node set to length. And now if we preview this, we can see that these are the colors same as the original particle system that we generated through simulation. We can connect this through the color ramp node and we now can select the colors that we want to use. By moving these flags closer, you can control the contrast between the colors. You can also instance separate object to this to use instead of these perfect spheres, something like rocks or whatever you want. You just need to make sure that it's low poly. To do this, we can add instance on point node. I'll just use simple cube for now. Before I plug this in into the instance socket, I want to add radius node that I will plug into the scale here. So the scale of the cube is driven by the radius that we set before. And now if we plug this in, we have this cube instanced on each point and with the proper scale as well. You might notice that we lost the color now and that's a simple fix. We just need to go back to the shader editor and all we need to do is change this from geometry to instancer. And now we have the color working back again. So if you're using point cloud, this will need to stay on geometry. And if you're using instances, change this to instancer. To make this look better, first thing we can do is maybe increase the scale a little bit. Now we can also fix the rotation of the cubes. We can make them follow the velocity. For that, we need to add align rotation to vector node. And the vector that we want to use is the velocity and we can plug this in into the rotation socket. Now we can see that the cube's rotation is following the velocity. If this looks too uniform for you, we can randomize this by adding rotate rotation node. 
and we can use random value node going from zero on the min and we can write tau in the max which is 2 pi and this will ensure that each cube has a random rotation if this is too much of randomness for you you can just go from zero to one quick tip in case you're working on a laptop or a computer is not strong enough here you can lower the particle amount while you're working for faster preview and when you're ready to render you can put this back to one last thing i want to show you is how to make the texture advect the fluid which is actually very difficult in blender and credits to cg matter for the method first we can make some space here First, we need to add the simulation zone, which will actually run separately from this geometry that we are going to render. We can plug this store name attribute into the simulation zone, and what we are storing is not going to be this velocity, but the position before the simulation. So we can add the position node and plug this into the value. Now we need to add a set position node into the simulation zone, and we are going to use the velocity to drive the position. But we can't just plug this in straight, we need to first scale this with the vector mad node set to scale and what we are using to scale this is the delta time. And if we preview this, we can see that the particles are driven by the velocity. Now this is not perfect and it can break very quickly and to fix this it will be very complicated and honestly even this can be useful for some logo effects or using procedural textures like noise. Now to transfer this rest position to the geometry that we will render, we can add another store name attribute node and place this into this branch that we are rendering. We're gonna name this V as well, and we need to set this to vector. Now we need the sample index node. We can change from float to vector, and what we are sampling is the attribute V. And we also need to sample nearest point to use as an index. Now we can plug this into the value of the store name attribute node, and if we preview this, we can see that we actually have the rest position captured. Now we can go back to the shader nodes. And we can add the new texture. And I will use Blender logo. For the vector, we're going to use the V attribute. And if we go to render mode, nothing changed. That's because this needs to go to color, not metallic. Now we can see it. We can change here from repeat to clip and in the mapping node we can adjust x and y position to 0.5 and also we can adjust the scale to 0.5. Now we have the logo in the middle and if we press play we can see that it's advecting with the fluid. Again this is not perfect but it works and looks much better with the procedural textures like noise that you can use to drive colors. These particle effects can be much better with the geometry nodes but that requires building particle solver and becomes very complicated so for now it's easier to use the fluid simulation. And that's it. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next video.